Music, Excel worksheet, scales, intervals, modes, and more, putting together the intervals part of the worksheet. Get ready and some coffee, and remember how the old saying goes, you know, you can't make an omelet without first cleaning a menstruating hen's toilet. You know, and the proper, the proper metaphorical utensil for the job is music theory and Excel. So let's do this. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you want to look at the intervals from a music theory standpoint and just look at the construction of that table, that's what we'll be doing this time. If you do have access to this workbook, I currently have three tabs, might have more tabs by the time I finalize this, but the general idea is that the green tab represents the end product after all of the presentations are done. That's what we're going to be constructing. And then the numbered tabs are gonna tie into the video presentation where we work on that part of the project. Let's take a look at the example tab to see where we are headed. What we would like to do is put together a practical worksheet that gives us information about music theory and from a guitar playing standpoint, allows us to practice our guitar playing and be able to adjust and manipulate this worksheet as we go. Therefore, from a practical standpoint, the most useful part is probably the fretboard, which we're mapping out here with the low string on top. Top string on top is what we're doing as we explained in a prior presentation, so that when we look at our fretboard here, it's the same going from left to right, top to bottom, as you're looking at the guitar from behind the guitar, left to right, top to bottom. Then we're gonna have our worksheet over here, which gives us a bunch of useful information, such as the notes, such as the intervals, such as the related modes, the related numbering positions, and then all of the notes and so on. And we can use that to then make colors on our fretboard that could help us to finger the particular positions for a particular scale, a particular chord, and so on and so forth. To construct this, we built tables on the left-hand side to help us tie into those worksheets, and these tables can be useful in and of themselves from a theory perspective. So that's what our end goal will be. Thus far, we've only done these two. That's what we did last time. Now we're gonna be constructing this bit here. And then we're gonna use that to construct these tables. And then once we get those tables, we will use that to construct our worksheet, which is the primary kind of end results over here. Okay, let's go back to the, this is the one we're starting on. So if you don't have these tables to start off with, that's okay because we're not actually connecting them right now. So if you just wanna look at this again from a theory standpoint, then I think it's useful to even draw this out even if you're not working on it in Excel, if you're not interested in Excel. If you are interested in Excel, these are gonna be the ground tables that we're going to use to then tie together using formulas and things like XLOOKUP uh, tools uh, in future presentations. So quick recap what we did last time. Noting we have our musical alphabet, which has 12 notes in it, and the sharps and flats are an area of complication, making it difficult to count up and back uh, in, in the notes. However, making it nice in some ways, because when we spell out different scales and, and chords and whatnot, we can do so using the sharps and flats so that we don't, so that, so that we have like one letter, for example, of the alphabet in every kind of scale or most common kind of scales and so on. So there's benefits to it, but it also adds complication. And therefore, it's also useful to number the notes. So we're gonna number the notes here for two reasons. One, it's useful just from a coding thing to tie things together. And two, it's practical to be able to code switch back and forth between the number and the letter, because that allows you to do some simple math to think about intervals and so on, which we will use heavily going forward. So that means that in the fretboard, we're actually gonna tie these two things together, giving us the absolute number and the absolute name. So this A doesn't represent the first in an A major scale. The A is equivalent to one when I'm thinking about the numbering system of the absolute numbering system. We then looked at the modes, noting 
and this will come more together once we start looking at the modes in more detail. But the modes are just basically all constructed from the same pattern. And so they're all kind of connected together. But we usually think of the Ionian as the major scale. And that will be our key that we use to map everything else to. Now remember, you could use any other mode in a similar fashion as the key. But you can almost think of this like I've been watching physics uh, lectures with relativity theory. So when we think of like physics, we have to have a point of reference so that we can basically then measure everything around us. The same thing's kind of happening, in my opinion, with my analogy in these modes, right? They're all connected, but you have to pin down a point of reference so that we can refer back to that point of reference. And that usually is going to be the major scale in Western music. So if obviously we want to keep that tradition because that'll make it a lot easier because everyone else is basically using that as the point of reference. It's kind of like using Earth as the point of reference. It makes sense because that's where we're at, right? So that's where we're looking from. Okay, so then we're going to say, now we're going to build our intervals worksheet. So I'm going to make a skinny G. I'd like the skinny G to be same skinny size as the D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the D. I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to go to the Clipboard and go to the Format Painter. And then I'll paint that over here so that I get the same skinniness. It's the same width. OK, and then I'll put my headers up top. So I'm going to say we want the interval number. And then I'm going to have the name. And then I'm just going to call this the Abreve. That stands for abbreviation, but I don't want it to be too long because that's going to be a small one and then or skinny cell and then the number and a brief again i'm trying to make this as thin as possible because i don't want to have headers that run on two layers here i could or i could wrap the headers as we discussed in prior presentations if they get too long but when you wrap the headers that means you hit you get this wider cell which i'm trying to avoid so I can either wrap the headers like that if I want to, or I can use two cells, like putting the number down here, and then I can make them black and white so it still looks nice. But if I was to make a table from it, then having two cells as the header row would be a problem. We're not gonna make a table, so that would be a viable solution for me. But what I'm gonna do is try to abbreviate the headers and make them a little bit longer, wider than they need to be to constitute or be wide enough for the things I'm gonna put underneath it. And that'll be the approach I'm going to use if I can. And then I'll have the alternate name over here. I'm gonna make this my normal header format. So we'll select these items. We're gonna to go to the home tab, font group, black, white, and then I will typically center it in the alignment group and center it. Now, we noticed over here that we only have 12 notes in the musical alphabet. When we look at intervals, it's pretty straightforward, the intervals. You can think of them as like distance. You can almost think of this as a ruler. In the American system, we have 12 inches, right? If you're in the other, some area in the world, right? And, and you know, we're not supposed to use that anymore, but we're stubborn over here because it needs to be as, I need to measure everything compared to my foot because the ruler's a foot. So that's how we do things. And we, so anyways, we got 12. If you think of those as 12 inches, then that's a kind of nice analogy to the, the system on the, the intervals here because we only have 12 intervals, right? We're just going up to 12 intervals. Now, the confusing thing with intervals is that we have different names for the intervals. And those, again, the naming conventions have a lot of good to them as does this sharp and flat convention, but it also causes a lot of issues, as does this sharp and flat convention, leading us to be able to name things multiple different kind of ways. So let me just give a quick recap of, of what I mean here. We, you, if I go back to this worksheet over here, notice that we could call things whole steps and half steps. So when we're looking at like a scale, for example, this is the common formula we would have, two, two, one, two, 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 one. In other words, if you look at a piano and you looked at all the white keys on the piano and go from C to C, you will see that that, there's, that, that pattern has 
uh, two, two half steps, two half steps, one half step, two half step, two half step, two half step, one half step. So, so, and so half step and whole steps are one way that you can see it. A whole step is basically two notes away. A half step is going to be a half note away. That means that our base unit of measurement is a half step, is one note. So, so if I'm looking at intervals and, I'm, and you're thinking of it as distance, like with a ruler, the half step is an inch, right? That's, that's as small as we go. That's as far down as we go. And then we, could, we can increase the unit size by calling it a whole step, which is just two half steps. So that's one way that we can do that. And we usually use that method, half whole steps terminology, when we're talking about the intervals from each individual note within a scale, from position one to relative position two to relative position three, and so on. But we also think about the intervals as they relate to the root note. So over here, for example, we're going to think about if these are the notes in the key from C to B. So I have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. What's the distance from this C to D here? Well, you can see that it's C. It's it's going from C to D, and there's a there's a uh, a sharp end there. So it's actually a distance of two half steps. If we looked at our if we looked at our uh, key over here, right? We're gonna say it goes from here uh, C and then C sharp to D, right? So it's actually two notes, which is a whole step. So it's two notes, but we don't really call that a whole step in this case because we're looking at it in the terms of the scale, and that's when we use this interval terminology. So even though it's two steps, which you could call two half steps or a whole step, we're going to call it a major second. So that's another. So if I'm talking about two half, two units away, notice all the names I have to say that now. I could say, well, it's two half steps. I can say it's a whole step away, or I can say it's a major second. And the major second means that it's a, it's a whole step away or two half steps. This one here, is going to be now I'm, I'm looking at the relationship it's going to be four notes away let's look at it down here because and i can see that because four minus eight minus four is four so it's four half steps away but i'm not going to call it four half steps away or two whole steps away but rather i'm going to call it a major third and a major third means that it's four away now why in the world do we have all these different measuring systems this by calling it a major third, it gives us more information. Uh, it, it tells us that it's the third in the scale. So if I'm looking at the scale, it's relative position number three. And, uh, and it's a major third. So it tells me it's in relation to the other majors that have a major third. Basically, you can think of it that way. But it also tells me that it's actually four notes away, which seems counterintuitive and is something many people probably don't fully understand because they're just thinking about the interval in terms of it being called major third, which is naming the position in the scale, but we drop off the units in terms of whole steps, half steps, uh, or, or notes away. And, that, and that's why people, I kind of, I think they lose that information. So that's what I'm going to try to add back into my system here by saying, that means it's a four note away major third. So that's what our table, that's what we're building over here in our table. So I'm gonna say the intervals then could either be zero because if I'm in relative position one, the, if I was going from C to C, it would be zero positions away. We could go one position away. So now we're a half step away or a minor second, right? And we can go two steps away which would be two half steps or a whole step away from the first position. We can go three steps away, which would be a minor third away, three steps, or we can go four steps away, which is a major third, right? So, and then we can go all the way up to how many steps away? 12. So if I select these and then put my cursor on the fill handle going down to 12, so the maximum distance that we can have is 12 steps away now you might say well hey wait i can go further than that 
Oh, hold on a sec. Why do I have... I'm going to delete this stuff above here. I started on cell 3 for some reason. I'm going to select 3 to 1, right-click, and delete those. So we could go further than, than 12, but then you would be going up another octave. So if you think about octaves, instead of thinking about things in a circle, right, which is how you would think about it, you can also think of it as like a spiral. So you're going, you're kind of going in a circle, but you're also spiraling in so that you still have distance, but you're going back around to the same tonality. But the simple like five view of it is we're going to get rid of the octave concept, except for the 12th is going to be the repeat. But, and we're just going to think of it as a circle that we get back to the start. It goes from C all the way around back to C, right? And, and we're looking at the distance, in this case, going one way from the starting point out until we get to the end. Okay, so then what would we name this? We could call this unison. Unison is one name you might call it. Most of the time we would call it like a perfect first. So if I was to say the key of C, if I was to play a C twice or something, I didn't go any distance. Those two notes are in the same position, and therefore you can call maybe that a perfect first. A mine, and that if it was one half step away, we can call that a minor second. So again, if you were counting from, so if I was looking at a scale, for example, if I go back to my example and we look at this worksheet, we're looking at the relative positions to the scale, in this case a C major scale, which we can label one through seven. So the second position, I'm going to call it the second. In this case, it's a major second, which is actually two notes away rather than one note away. But the point is that this second right here represents kind of like the relative position in the scale, typically, not the number of notes away. In this case, it's only one note away because it's a minor second, which we can abbreviate with a small m instead of a large m, which would be the major second, small m2. And then if it's two notes away, which would be a whole step, we can call that a whole step. We can call that a two half steps away. But if we're looking at the scale relation to the, to the first note, then we typically call that a major second. And we label that with a capital M two. Now notice what there's some information kind of missing here. Because if, if, if I go back on over again, now I'm on the major second, which is this one. The two here represents the relative position in the scale, not the, the, the number of units. In this case, they happen to be the same two units away, which again can lead to confusion because they're not always the same. In other words, you can see that we have a two here and a two here, but these aren't the same distance because a minor second is only one note away, a major second is two. Also, this one is confusing as well because usually you would think that if it says that it's a minor second, it would coincide to the default minor scale, which is the Aeolian mode. But it what really is happening is we're defaulting to the major scale because that's the key that we're thinking of ourselves. That's our reference point like we do in physics. That's like us. We're referencing from us. We're like the major scale and and then and then everything that's in the major scale will have major or it'll be perfect and then and then if it's not major we'll default to minor typically unless we designated it as perfect noting that perfect is basically something that oftentimes is the same in the major and the minor but uh in not in the major minor modes but like the major and minor main scales but I think it's just a historical kind of convention that they chose some things to be perfect. Rather, So basically, it's going to be, if it's in the major scale, it's going to be major or perfect. And then if it's not major or perfect, then it's kind of default to minor or something other than that is the general idea. So in the third one, we're going to say this is going to be minor third. So now three notes away is a minor third, which is going to be represented with a small m and a three. And then four notes away then is going to be a major third. And that's going to be a capital M and a three. 
So once again, this major third is losing some information here because if I look at the scale, I mean, if I look at our worksheet, the third in the major scale has a major third, but I'm gonna say that it is four notes away which is something that a lot of people don't really realize because we've dropped off the actual units away it is because it's easier to say major third and i think people lose the actual distance in our baseline units which are half steps so if i go back on over we can represent that we're going to tie these two things together over here with a with a nice little formula that's just going to tie the two things together which looks like this equals I'm going to pick up the interval and then I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to tie it to with an and. So I'm going to say and. And then I kind of want to have a dash to separate this number from here. So I have to type that in to type something in manually. I'm going to put a quote and then a space and then a quote that'll add a space. And then I have to tie that into the next thing I'm going to put into it, which is this P1. So and shift seven, which is a kind of like the not. I don't need quotes because this is in the cell. I'm not typing it in and enter. So now, and, and maybe I should have a dash, not a space. I'm going to double click. Instead of having a space in here, I'm going to put a dash. So now this, gets, this is not what you will typically see. You're typically just going to, and if I copy this down, let's copy it down first. And let's look at like a major third and a minor third. You're typically just going to see a, a, a small M and a three and a big M and a three. You're not going to see the three and the four. But in our worksheet, I want to reference that it's a three and a four to give that added information to remind myself what the actual distance is in our core units of half steps, which is equivalent or similar to in our analogy to a ruler inches, right? Those are the baseline units that we're measuring in. All right, so then five steps away, we call this a perfect fourth. Now this, again, it gets confusing here because you're like, hey, wait a sec, I'm making this a little larger. It's a perfect fourth, but it's five steps away. Why does it say four? Because the four would be the relative position in the scales. And perfect usually means that both the major and the minor have that same distance. But I don't think that's what it was originally designed for. It was originally called perfect because it had some kind of perfect sound. They thought it was it was so instead of just calling it the major fourth, which would be consistent with our with our numbering system here, they've said this one was special interval for some reason. It's part of the major, but we're gonna call it a perfect fourth. For practical purposes, for us, we can usually think of the perfect ones to be like they're usually gonna be the same between the major and minor scales. However, they might not be the same for all modes, right? All the different major and minor modes. So then we got the next one, which is going to be the, 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 uh, the six is gonna be the diminished fifth. And so that one is confusing because we're saying, now it's the, I'm gonna make this a little larger because we're on we're calling it the fifth but it's six units away so so we're, and so we're going to call this and i'm going to abbreviate this to i'm just going to call it a d5 and so then we have seven notes away which we call a perfect fifth this time so now it's seven notes away it's the perfect fifth and I'm gonna call this P5. So that one, this diminished fifth is not in the major scale. So, so, and it's also not in the minor scale, right? So we're not calling it a minor uh, fifth. It's gonna be the diminished fifth. And anytime you hear diminished, that basically means we're gonna take what it normally would be, a normal perfect fifth and bring it down a half step this and then the perfect fifth is the one it's perfect again and if you take the inverse relationships between the fourth and the fifth they are they're related they're inversely kind of related which we might look at more later but that basically i think is the rationale i think what happened is they say the perfect fifth has to be perfect because they thought it had some special sound and then 
that means that the fourth has to be perfect. You would think it as well because that's the inverse relationship when you think of it as an interval, meaning if you took, if you, if you, if you went one way from like the C to the fifth, like from the first to the fifth, and then you switch swapped it around from the, from the fifth back to the, to the first, you would have the inverse relationship between the fourth and the fifth. And therefore you think that they both have to be perfect. Any case, then that's my, that's my thinking of why that happened in any case. Eight is gonna be a minor, minor uh, sixth. So now eight notes away is gonna be a minor six with a small m six. And then the ninth is gonna be a major sixth. So, and it's gonna be capital M six. So if I looked at our scale over here, we're looking at relation to the major scale. The sixth is a major sixth, which is nine notes away. And the minor uh, sixth then is, is, I'm sorry, the major sixth is nine notes away. And the minor sixth is eight notes away. So this works into our thinking that, mo that kind of works conventionally most of the time, that if it's perfect, then it kind of will be in the normal major and the normal minor, although possibly not in all the major and minor modes. And if it's a major, it's gonna be in the major, possibly not in the minor. And then if it's a minor, then it's usually gonna be in the minor with the exception of this minor second, which is strange. You would think that the minor scale would have the minor second, but it has a major second. So there's a little wonk, there's a little bit of wonkiness. Uh, so you gotta kind of work with these things. But then we have the minor seventh, which is gonna be small m seven, and then the major seventh, and so m seven. So if we look at our worksheet over here, which is based on the major scale, the seventh here is 11 notes away, major seventh. So major seven means it's 11 notes away. And the minor seventh, as we would expect, is, is, is different, right? And it's gonna be 10 notes away in our case. That kind of follows our convention here. And then if it's 12 notes away, it's the octave, meaning we're back around the circle. So if you think if you were to plot this in a circle, you know, we would be back basically to one here. So that you can call that a perfect eighth, or you can call it the perfect first again, basically. Uh, and we're back and starting up again. So those are all those are all the distances that we can basically have, although some of the names could change if you're spelling them out in different weird scenarios because of the naming conventions and so on and so forth. But basically it's fairly straightforward in that it would like it would be like we're trying to take our ruler from zero to 12 and then take each interval that we can have, right? I'm just looking at each interval from the starting point and naming each interval, which can be useful because that naming of the interval gives us added information about the relative position in the scales, right? And, 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 it also, and, and it also, so by naming it that way, it gives us the relative position of the scale and it gives us basically the, the units, how far away it is. The problem, of course, is that we've dropped off. Again, we've dropped off the, the relative position in our baseline unit of half steps. And so I think people lose, they get confused of all these numbers. Notice all the different numbering conventions we have. I'm using a numbering convention for the absolute notes. So when I'm using that numbering system, these numbers don't change compared to the note. They are equivalent to the note. We're gonna use a numbering system for the modes because I'm gonna to try to label the modes one through seven modes based on the major scale being our baseline vantage point, our point of reference. We have a numbering system with these capital and lowercase Roman numerals, which could represent relative position in a scale. I'm gonna use them here when referring to modes as the absolute position of each mode and telling us that it's a minor mode or major by upper or lowercase. Then we have this numbering convention here, 
for the intervals, which I could basically just say these are all the different links of distance from a starting point, which again is dependent on our point of reference, depending on the scale that we're in. Whatever scale that we're in, we can measure from that point, and the furthest distance we can go, not counting octaves, is 12 units, 12 half steps away. And then we're just gonna name each of those each of those distances so that we have as much packed in as much information as we can to each of those naming conventions, which they overdid, I think, because we lost a lot of people are losing the number of half steps that are in the naming convention when when they just see like a major second and a major third. They're not thinking two notes away and three three notes away or something like that. So the idea, perfect first is going to be the same for the major and minor. When we get to the minor second, that's the thing that's funny. The second position is, is for a major and minor is typically a major second. That's weird, uh, but that you got to have to kind of memorize that. With the major third, it's normal, the major and minor third, in that the major third is different from the minor third. The major third is the interval related to the major scale from this starting point. The minor third is the interval for a minor. The perfect, whenever we see perfect, we're usually thinking that at least the normal major Ionian and the minor scale Aeolian will have that same interval from a logistic standpoint, that's easy to see. And then this one diminished Notice what happened here. We have the the fifth, which is diminished. So that means it's it would be major or perfect if it was in the major scale. So it's not in the major scale. You would think it would be a minor fifth if it was in the Aeolian or minor scale, but it's not. So they put it diminished. That's a nicer naming convention. You would kind of think that they would have called this minor second, a diminished second or something like that. You know, because then that would kind of make more sense in some ways. I'm maybe I'm I'm probably I've thought this out before. I think there's something else that. But any case, and then we have the perfect fifth, which would indicate to us that that's going to be the same distance in the major Aeol, Ionian and the minor Aeolian, and then we have the major sixth, which is different than the 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 minor sixth which the naming convention makes sense because the major is the interval for the major, the minor is the interval for the minor or Aeolian, and then the major seventh and the minor seventh makes sense because again, the major seventh is the distance in the major scale and the minor seven is difference and is the difference in the minor or Aeolian, and then of course the octave. Now you could have alternative names and you could name things like the same distance using different names so I, you know, you could use any of these intervals. I could just say now it's going to be a diminished one, right, or augmented. So whenever you hear these terms diminished or augmented, uh, you're basically saying this is what it would have been, and then I'm going to move it one step up or down. So, so if it's if it's going to be diminished, you're moving it down. If it's augmented, you're moving it up. Why don't they just say up or down? I don't know. It seems a lot less like these are big words i don't know why you need such a big word but that's that's the terminology so let's go ahead and put some brackets around this home tab font group brackets around this can i check the spelling maybe i'll say spell check this thingy perfect change did i not spell that right perfect perfect and then i'm going to ignore that octave is spelled wrong okay i think uh, and then abbreviation that's spelled wrong okay i think that's good so that's going to be that now next time we're going to we're going to we're going to build the next table which will be taking the modes and then looking at another kind of concept of intervals but this being the pattern of intervals from note to note rather than the pattern of each distance to the root note and this is the the formula that gives us our 
our different modes. The most common one that we start off with being whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's how we get from 12 notes to our seven note scale. And we'll, and all the modes are just interrelated. They're that same pattern, but starting from different points, which is why I say that they're kind of like a point of reference issue. Like where, where am I looking from uh, in order to get the same? They're all connected. They're all kind of woven together. It's just what what's the point that I'm looking at? And of course, the point that we're referring from is the major scale so that we can get a foothold using that as our key to then compare everything else to. So that's our perspective. 